This is Toledo Symphony Lab, a behind-the-scenes look at the world of classical music from WGTE Public Media and your Toledo Symphony. I'm Brad Cresswell. Joining me today in the studio are the TSO's Director of Marketing, Vanessa Gardner. We also have Marketing Manager, Ali Dresser. And on the phone with us right now, we have a very special guest. That is... Our guest is Shana Steele, who is singing at the Peristyle. It's Saturday at 8 p.m., January 29th. The program is called Queens of Soul. Shana, welcome to Toledo Symphony Lab. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, we are so glad to have you. We're glad to have you in Toledo singing these fantastic songs all backed up by the uh, Toledo Symphony. I should mention, if folks want to go to that concert, they can go online to the website at ToledoSymphony.com, or they can call up the box office, 419-246-8000. So, Shana, you are a singer, and you specialize in this kind of music. What we usually do when we have a guest come on to a Toledo Symphony Lab is have them tell us their story so we get to know okay. them a little bit. So I'm I'm going to ask you to tell us, you know, the story of your path as a musician. You can go back as far as you want, you know, last week or several years ago or however many years ago. Um, I'm going to give you a choice of music here. I've got two different things. I've got this kind of a soulful background, and then I've got this, which is kind of an inspirational background. <laughs> I can't really hear it. <laughs> well, let's go with A then. That'll be easier to hear. Okay. So we're turning the clock back. Shana Steele, let's hear your story. Oh, wow. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, I kind of I grew up all over. My dad was military, um, and he was a performer as well. My sister also uh, said there was a lot of music and singing in the house. I did musicals growing up, so yeah, I always had dreams of being on Broadway. So uh, I moved to New York fairly young, about 20 years old, and started auditioning for shows. Booked my first Broadway show, uh, which was Rent, Ooh. Uh, wow. the original cast. So I was uh, one of the first replacements. I was the first replacement in that cast, and uh, and then I went on to do a couple more Broadway shows, including the original cast of Hairspray. So uh, after that, I w was like, I think I want to take a break from musicals. I really want to sing and I want to travel. Um, so I, <clears throat> excuse me, I started to pursue background singing for different artists. The first artist I sang background for was Bette Midler, wow. and which was a really awesome experience. Uh, she, I did her Las Vegas residency at Caesars Palace for a couple years. And uh, soon after that, I went on a world tour with Rihanna as her background singer. Um, so it was around that time that I knew I wanted to start a family. And I also, you know, I was already making records and kind of touring a little bit as a solo artist. Um, but uh, I wanted to start a family. So I, I, had a, I had a daughter with my husband, who was also a successful musician. Um, and... It was probably around that time that I fully, you know, sub submersed myself into solo singing and, and really um, taking everything that I had been inspired by my whole life, uh, you know, Aretha Franklin and jazz, you, you know, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, and just kind of combining all of those sounds together to start creating my own sound. And, uh, and, and I started to really take songwriting seriously. Um, and it was uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe four or five years after I left Rihanna, I, I sang with Kelly Clarkson for a while, um, just to, you know, making ends meet, and and it, it, that was also a really awesome experience. But of course, my my goal was always to just be out front as a soloist, um, and actually singing with symphonies was kind of a surprising, um, unexpected <clears throat> part of my career to, to happen. Um, when I started working with my my agents in New York, uh, Greenberg Artists. It just kind of flourished from there, and um, and then a few years went by, and I had sung in front of like fifty symphonies. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess this is part of my career now. And, and Queens of Soul was uh, was one of the shows I got to 
uh, I got to debut, and of course, it's just right up my alley um, yeah. because I grew up listening to, Mot- to Motown and soul music um, because my father was always playing those records in the house. Um, so I would say that soul music is my foundation. Um, yeah. and, and we all do, and even though that's not the only music I listen to or the only music I sing, um, but it is definitely the foundation of who I am as, a, as an artist and as a musician. That's wonderful. Um, Yay! Yay. <laughs> yeah. What an awesome um, career. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to hear you. So as, as of now, you know, where I am right now, I'm working on my fourth studio album. I continue to, to tour and, and front symphonies, big bands, and my own band all around the world. Um, I just finished a two-week tour in Europe, and I toured the U.S. with my band for two weeks. Um, and... Uh, and I actually went back to school during the pandemic. I'm going to Berkeley College of Music to finish my music degree. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Good for you. Yeah. I went to the uh, Boston Conservatory right around the corner. Oh, you did? I did? Yeah, I went to New England Conservatory. So we have sort of an old Boston <laughs> crowd here. I think I was probably the first of us. <laughs> I think I was the first to go. But... Uh, <laughs> What a remarkable story. And, and Shana, you know, that leaves me with the burning question. Mm-hmm. Um, who was the best behaved? Was it Bette Midler, Rihanna, or, <laughs> or Kelly Clarkson? I had to sign non-disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, I can't really. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Listen, they were all well behaved. Um, okay. I mean, each, every single one of them. I mean, I feel really fortunate to have worked for three very strong women very strong minded. And I learned something new about, about myself from each one of them. From Bet, I learned that it's okay to embrace mistakes and make it part of your acts, make, make it mm-hmm. part of your shtick. Um, she's like the queen of like forgetting a lyric or something. And then she would turn it into comedy immediately. And so I think I, I learned that in my own performance. I mean, I remember one of the first symphony gigs I did, my heel got stuck in the stage. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and, um, and Jeff Tysak was conducting, and I just kind of grabbed his arm, and the orchestra's playing, and I'm like, wait a minute, oh, my shoe's stuck, you know. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I just immediately pulled up Bette Midler, and I just <laughs> pulled, and I was like, Jeff, you're going to have to hold on to me. I got to pull, and I just pulled my feet out, and I threw my other shoe across the field. <laughs> Lord, and I was like, we're going to do the song bare, and I just, you know, I made it part of the thing. So that's awesome. I would, yeah. I would say with Beth, that was um, that's something I learned from her and have embraced that. With Rihanna, I uh, watching her multitask to not only be on tour, but she was making an album on tour and she was starting a makeup company, which we now know to be Fenty Beauty, yeah. quite successful. So to watch a young woman like her multitask and be good at all of it was amazing. And then Kelly is just the most down to earth, like homegirl, mm-hmm. you want to go and grab biscuits and fried chicken with her. <laughs> all the time. Like, and, and she has this incredible voice. So all three of them were really an amazing experience yeah. for me. Well, and you mentioned your husband, who's a prominent musician as well. Yeah. He had worked a lot with uh, Taylor Swift, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He, he's her musical director and has been for, oh gosh, where are we at? 12, maybe t- 12 years now. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you've come into the orbit of some high-profile uh, female performers, mm-hmm. and you yourself, of yeah. course, could be counted in that company. Mm-hmm. Talk mm-hmm. a little bit about um, your earlier years. I, I, reading about you, I saw that you were on Star Search. I had completely <laughs> forgotten about this show. I, I don't know if Allie is too young to remember or not, with Ed McMahon. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. It was sort of like the precursor to America's Got Talent and all those programs. American Idol. Oh, yeah. Oh, I do. I used to. The original. Yeah. (laughs) So you were on Star Search, and I'm reading that you lost by half a star. I'm not quite sure how that works. that's the worst. (laughs) Oh, it was terrible. I was 16. (laughs) So, you know, high school, everyone watched it on national television to walk back into school after. And this was like during summer break when I taped it. Mm. So to walk back in just with my head, you know, going into my junior year of high school, you're just like, you're the girl that lost on Star Trek. No. <laughs> Tell me that they didn't do that to the you. Kids are awful. That's oh, true. Terrible, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Man. 
Wow. Was, yeah, thank God there was no social media. That no one could just replay it over and over again. So, oh. But you've made up for it now. We can just talk about it and we can make it mean anything that we want, you know, <laughs> at, at this point. It's a great yeah. story, though. So, it, you know, I'm going to add Ed McMahon to that list of, of well-behaved celebrities. Was he a, a good a good guy to be around? or I actually had no time with him whatsoever, <sighs> you know. It, the way the show was taped, he, he the only time I saw him is when he was introducing me, you know. Oh, okay. That so he it. just read your name and that was it. Yeah, yeah, and then the little chat, you know, how they bring you over after the performance and have a chat. So tell me where you're from and blah, blah, blah. That was my only, that was my only contact with Ed McMahon. And then they, <laughs> they swiftly, you know, kick you off the stage <laughs> and, and I crying backstage with my dad Aww. and I was like I yeah. quit I Aww. wanted to quit the business after that it was just pretty horrifying so it was basically same old show business story right yeah <laughs> same old yep. same old well I do have a quiz that I'm going to sprinkle throughout the uh, the program oh, today God. so okay <laughs> so let's do let's do a little bit of this quiz only three questions in each of these segments so the first segment now, the quiz is the the two queens quiz. So you tell me if this fact relates to the Queen of Soul, who, of course, is Aretha Franklin, mm-hmm. or the Queen of England, who is Elizabeth <laughs> II, All right? Now, now I'm going to have to speak of both of these in past tense because one of them is dead. So that would be a dead giveaway, no oh, pun intended. Jeez, Brad. If I were to say... No, man. The Queen of England is still, you know, trucking. Yeah. She's kicking it. <laughs> She's still going along. You haven't, you haven't sung for her, though, right? I have not. Yeah. Yet. Okay. No. Although Aretha has, I believe, sung. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. She did sing a command performance for. Her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's not on the quiz. Here we go. <laughs> Let me pull up a little uh, quiz music here, if I can find it. There we go. <laughs> My goodness. Right, get us in the mood. <laughs> Now, you don't have to answer these questions right when I say them. We'll, we'll come back and answer them after I've done all three. So the first question is, this queen's favorite film when she was a child was The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex. Or Essex, sorry. <laughs> Essex, yes. Elizabeth and Essex. Essex. <laughs> Hello. Boy, I've seen it many times. I just can't say it. Actually, I haven't seen it. Okay, so that's the first question. Let's go to the second one. Mm-hmm. Uh, this queen is was known or is known, <laughs> was or is known for drinking two or three glasses of booze every single day. Okay. I mean, if you're a queen, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. And the third question here is one of our queens, their first job was as a truck driver. Okay, so three different questions. Okay, Okay. so the first one, let's go back and answer that. Her favorite film when she was a child was The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex. Film came out in 1939, but it was... Well... (laughs) But it was, I think, later watched by this person. Anyway, can you name who it was? You got a 50-50 chance. Was it uh, Queen of Soul or Queen of England? I'm going to say Her Majesty the Queen of England. <laughs> oh, no. really? That's what I put, too. It was actually Aretha Franklin. I had Aretha. said that was her favorite wow. song, her favorite wow. movie, yeah. I had Aretha. Okay, the second one. <clears throat> Known for drinking two or three glasses of booze every day. Which queen was that, England or Seoul? Hmm. I mean, I feel like Aretha Franklin drinking that much and sounding as good as she did. I'm going to say the Queen of England. Yay! Yeah. Get this. Supposedly, the Queen of England, Elizabeth II, she drinks gin mixed with Dubonnet Mm -hmm. and a slice of lemon on the rocks every day before lunch. She also reportedly drinks wine at lunch and has a glass of champagne every evening. So that is yeah. the life. Yeah. And she has she's still here. So. Yeah. I know. That's a the secret <laughs> to her success. To keeps the blood thin and flowing. Bottoms up, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm I'm gonna jump on that bandwagon. Okay. Speaking of bandwagons, our last question in this segment was one of this person's first jobs was as a truck driver. <laughs> It has to be Aretha. I feel, it has I to be. I'm pretty confident that uh, Her Majesty did not have a job. Ever. <laughs> exactly. I'm say the 
No, it actually was Elizabeth II. She oh, was sorry. she drove a truck in the army. She joined oh, the army. Oh, she oh, was was yeah. it a job? Well, that was sort of a job. I mean, I mean, that was like a responsibility. Yeah. She was the only monarch in the 20th century to actually serve in the armed forces. Wow. Okay. So, cool. yeah, when she was young, and this may have been what well, was before she was the Queen of England, oh, but she did like drive a truck in the she army. Queen of England when she was like nineteen or something. Yeah, 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 she was very pretty young. young. At least pretty according young. to the wow. crown. Well, well I she's yeah. was miserably. Didn't I, I also I feel miserably. That's okay. We're gonna say that uh, I won that one. Okay. <laughs> First round goes to me. All right, let's turn that music off. <clears throat> That's enough of that. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the queens that you have on this program. It's not just Aretha Franklin, but some other uh, famous singer-songwriters that you are performing their hits, Mm -hmm. right? Can you talk a little bit about what we're going to hear from you? Well, you know, obviously Aretha Franklin being the queen of soul just inspired Mm -hmm. this, this young generation of singers from Adele to Alicia Keys. Um, and then you've also got, you know, icons like Gladys Knight and, um, gosh, I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I can't think off the Tina top of Tina Turner, head Etta James. Uh, yeah, Etta James and, uh, yeah. Ed McMahon. No. <laughs> no, no, no Ed McMahon. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, you can't you can't hit them all, you know, or we'd have a 10-hour program, but <laughs> we're definitely hitting a lot of good a good ones. You know, we have uh, legends, and then we also have some of the, the newer singers that are out there right now, you yeah. know, making great soul music. Mm-hmm. Now, did you mention that, that you're a songwriter yourself, or you write I music? Am. Yeah, are we going to hear anything by you? On this no, not in this program. I have a um, I have a couple other symphony mm-hmm. programs that I I have done original music, and um, I'm I'm writing a show right now. There's a show being created right now. That ah. a, a lot of my original music. So yeah. will that be with Greenberg too? Yes, yes. Cool. So Jamie uh, nice. is the producer on that show, awesome. and um, and it was actually supposed to debut. Um, in April of 2020 mm-hmm. with the Rochester right. Symphony. Um, the show is called American Diva. Um, so cool. and, and because of the pandemic, so everything got pushed. So I think the earliest I would be doing that program will be in the 23-24 season. Yeah. Well, we look yeah. forward to that. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit more about how the whole COVID situation affected you. You mentioned going back to school, and it's the first mm-hmm. time I've, I've heard an artist say, that they did something like that. They turned it into a, you know, kind of a, a, a self-working period. Mm-hmm. Um, what led you to that decision? Well, I, I had already been going back to school, but I was actually working on an English mm-hmm. degree. <laughs> and um, because I, I just looked at, I was like, you know, I am working as a musician. I don't need a degree to do what I, to do what I do. Um, but the longer that I pursued the English degree, the more I, I was, um, being led to, to do the music degree and finish that. Um, so I applied to Berkeley and got in and I thought this is, this is really what I want to do. And it was the right move. Um, and because it was during the pandemic, when I started, I immediately took, um, classes that could benefit, you know, me as a recording artist so that I could set my studio up. So I took a pro tools class and, set up a studio and one of my first gigs coming out of the pro when, once I got out of the pro tools class was recording for Saturday night live. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. I, I was able to do a lot of recording for SNL during the pandemic because I had the home studio. So, um, it was a good move. <laughs> yeah, totally. We're talking with Shana Steele, who is coming to the Peristyle on Saturday. It's January 29th at 8 PM performing a program entitled Queens of Soul, music that uh, was performed by Aretha Franklin, some of the hits from lots of different uh, different artists that are on the program. And uh, Shane is our guest for Toledo Symphony Lab today. We're talking about that, also doing a little bit, bit of a Queens quiz that we're going to revisit in just a moment here. Um, Allie, let me let you talk a little bit because you haven't you haven't uh, had a chance to really oh boy. chime in here. But uh, what, what's your reaction to what Shane has been telling us? I think it's absolutely incredible your your musical journey. Um, 
all that you've accomplished so far. And I myself am just so looking forward to having you here next weekend uh, or this weekend, actually. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Really quick. Saturday. <laughs> uh, Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. So I am bringing my entire family and some friends. Wow. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great, great night. Yeah, and when Allie says she's bringing her family, that that's that, that's a substantial group of people. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right? a big group. <laughs> yes, it'll oh, be great. Man. I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, great. what do you what do you think, Vanessa? I mean, what's your uh, take oh, on I this? Wanna, I want to I want to know all the Broadway stories. Uh, yeah, I we feel have to like get I feel all the like scoop. we probably have some musician friends um, that that cross over and. Um, I'm sure we don't have time to to go all into that, but <laughs> we're going to go through the six degrees or one degree of separation, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, uh, gosh, where to begin? I mean, what do you want to hear? I, I we mean, we like, want to hear all the dirt. Anything you have to offer? Just how how freaking cool is it that you were in Rent? I mean, yeah, that must have yeah. been such an incredible experience. It was a life-changing experience, and especially to go in so early. Mm -hmm. um, I went in in October of 96, and Jonathan Larson had passed in Janu January, January 25th, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and then the show moved to Broadway in April. So it was still, um, I think that the week that I auditioned, they were on the cover of like Time Magazine mm -hmm. and yeah. had just done the Tonys. Um, and I was like sitting in a bar watching the Tonys in Philly with my friend watching Rent. And I just said, I, I am supposed to be in that show. I need to be in that show. That's so, so cool. a couple months later, mm -hmm. I was auditioning and um, booked it. Um, so, yeah, it was incredible to walk into the theater on day one to meet everybody, the original cast, and also just to learn the show from people who were actually with Jonathan. Mm. Yeah. It's a whole different experience, and um, and I think it's really important when new people come to do Rent, that it's very important for them to learn about the characters, where they came from, um, and, what, and what they meant to Jonathan. These, these aren't just made-up characters. Jonathan wrote this, this piece around all of his friends, especially mm -hmm. friends of his who passed from AIDS uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I was glad I got to learn the history of the show from the original cast because it it gives it, it gives it a whole new perspective when you're performing the piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was living in New York back at the time, and I remember um, when Anthony Tomasini wrote that that article in the Review and talking about Jonathan Larson and his passing mm -hmm. and all of that. All of the attention that shifted to it, but but it was such a I don't want to say magical because it's tragic that he passed away, but that mm -hmm. period of time. In the gestation of the show was was really something to uh, something to behold for the folks who, yeah. who had it on their radar at the time. Yeah. So it's quite amazing that you had such a big uh, role in that process. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was amazing, and and I have to say, you know, what a gift to have given his parents because mm -hmm. to lose a child, I can't even imagine that's like the worst thing to happen so for them they were at the sh they were at the show quite a bit and mm. we're, we're backstage and we spent a lot of time with yeah. his parents and what a gift that they got to see they got to see their son every day through that show mm. yeah um like i'm i'm so happy for them that they you know that they, i mean they lost their son but then this beautiful show this beautiful story and this piece and just this life-changing moment in theater that they got to see their son's work become, you know, monumental in theater. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's turn to uh, another section of our quiz here. I've got three different okay. questions now. Mm -hmm. And again, this is uh, Queen of England or Queen of Soul, one or the other, 50-50 chance, okay? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll pull up the our lovely music again. Yeah, get that going. Okay. <laughs> At least it's not the minute waltz. Or Question number one. <laughs> oh no, I, no, I have the minute waltz. Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, serves me right. Okay. There have been seven Roman Catholic popes during this person's life. <laughs> I guess that's the question. That's what I got <laughs> written down here. Okay, okay, so you decide who that is. Okay. That's okay. Pope in their lifetime? Yeah, during their lifetime. Okay, oh. so, okay. The next one is, this person was born on the same day as 
the creator of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Richard O'Brien, who played Riff Raff in the movie. Mm. He was born on the exact same day. Okay. And the final question is, this person always carried or carries her purse with her, but only carried cash in it one day a week. That's easy. Yeah. Who I was it and for what that. purpose? <laughs> okay, so three questions, all right? Let's go back to number one. There, there were seven Roman Catholic popes who lived during this person's lifetime. I would say the Queen of England. Mm. No, actually, no. It, it started out as I found this question relating to the Queen of England, and then I thought, well, I'll turn it on its head and see how many lived during Aretha Franklin's <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> so, uh, actually, oh. seven Roman Catholic popes uh, lived during Aretha Franklin's lifetime, but they also lived during the reign of Elizabeth II. She had one more before she became queen, so there were eight during her lifetime. So it was really oh, a both wow. and. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it, oh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll accept that. So I get half a point. <laughs> I'll accept anything there. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Who was born on the same day as Richard O'Brien from the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Who would that be? March twenty fifth, nineteen. I, I before I googled, I did write down Aretha. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, nineteen forty two. Same day, for what it's worth. Okay. Um. Now this one, always oh, carried her purse with her, but only carried cash in it one day a week. Aretha. Mm, actually, <laughs> actually, Aretha carried her purse with her. All the time because she would get paid in cash. Yeah. Right. And she would take the cash on stage in her purse. Yeah. Um, but the Queen of England always carries her purse because she uses it to signal her staff, evidently, mm -hmm. depending oh, yeah. on what she does with the purse. On the floor means let's get out of here. Uh, <laughs> sitting down, putting it on her lap means I want this question to end. <laughs> it's, it's mostly about, you know, her staff rescuing her yeah. from one situation okay. or the other. So oh, that's but, a trick question because I knew Aretha yeah. carried that purse with cash everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this is a trick question because the Queen of England only carried cash in her purse one day a week, oh, okay. which was Sundays, so she could uh, give money to the church. Aww. Right. Well, there you have it. Well, well. Yes. <laughs> Failing. You can you can tell I put like a, a whole bunch of time into the preparation of this quiz, right? Wow. Yeah, it, it helps that I make most of it up. Okay, so let's go back and talk a little bit more about the uh, the concert now. Uh, Aretha Franklin, the the Queen of mm -hmm. Soul. You know, as you were talking, Shana, about Rent, um, mm -hmm. it made me think of you know La Boheme, the opera by Puccini, right. mm -hmm. at, which was sort of the the, at the at its core, the source material for Rent. Yeah. Um, then I think of Aretha Franklin and back in the 90s when she stood in for Luciano Pavarotti at the Grammys. Yeah. Have you seen this where she sang Nessun Dorma? Mm, I think I so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which again was Puccini from his opera Turandote. But I just remember at the time a lot of people like looking down, thumbing their nose at it and thinking, oh, that's not, you know, opera. But I got to say, it's pretty spectacular in her interpretation of it. It's a lot better than what you see, like, on America's Got Talent or <laughs> or, or Star Search or what have you. Oh, I mean, man. Yeah, well, I don't mean, I don't mean your performance. <laughs> yes. President, I forgot That's that nice we— Nice one, Brad. I forgot <laughs> that we had— <laughs> Yeah, I, I forgot that we had the— celebrity gracing our presence. <laughs> anyway, I meant Star Search uh, aside from your performance. But, um, Shane, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about, you know, the cross-pollination and and how pretty much anything can be a spectacular performance in the hands of a great performer, right? Right. Without a doubt. Um, I, I, I'm trying to think of another example of something like that happening. I mean, just having a pop pop series with a with an orchestra in general is kind of a cross cross pollination of styles i mean mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a world that i didn't know once i started singing the symphonies just even how to behave react be <laughs> in general you know i can't come on stage you know demanding a bottle of whiskey and cursing like a sailor on well stage you can try yeah <laughs> see what happens uh, right hey you never know that's uh 
Those, those uh, violins, man, those are some rowdy, <laughs> rowdy Especially ours. There. Um, <laughs> Tell them you have a, a glass of champagne every night before bed. <laughs> See you again. Right, exactly. I have a question for you about that, actually. Um, so, you know, being in Boston for a long time, watching, um, you know, artists who have their own careers in pop, um, mm-hmm. playing with the Boston Pops and whatnot, um, I remember when Cindy Lauper was the guest artist for Pops um, on the 4th of July. And um, I had a, a friend at the time that was working on arranging the the parts for the orchestra. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, is Phil Collins going to be the, the artist? And no, it's Cindy Lauper. Okay. But there's there's a totally different um process to getting up on stage with your own band that knows the charts that mm-hmm. knows you can improvise and then having an orchestra behind you that has you know sheet music in front of you mm-hmm. with exactly the number of measures can mm-hmm. you just talk about the difference of that and maybe what adjustments you've made when you've you know been in those circumstances well, I kind of look at it at an orchestra versus singing with like a quartet as a as a huge like cruise ship. You know, when like a, I hate to bring up the types because a lot of people die, but I I I do think of the orchestra like the Titanic, where they were doing everything in their power to slow down or to shift to not hit a an iceberg. (laughs) And it's the same with an orchestra. It is such a big machine that it is easier for me, the small peg um, (laughs) or the small, the the cog in the wheel, this big wheel of of an orchestra. It's easier for me to adjust than for me to ask a hundred people to Mm -hmm. adjust (laughs) to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So that for me was, was a shift because when I'm with my band, I can kind of tell them, Oh, I want, you know, I want this solo to go an extra, you know, I want you to go an extra uh, round of this, you Mm -hmm. know, do the A section again. I can kind of call things as I see fit as a band leader. But with the symphony, I kind of have to, I got to follow the rules. Um, And also the way I study the the program, how I study the music, Mm -hmm. I have to make sure I have the measure counting in check, my intros, or it's going to be a disaster. Mm. So, Oh my gosh. Yeah, I I hardly think it's going to be a disaster. So no, it definitely <laughs> absolutely. Well, because I because I come prepared. Yeah, and, um, and and I have to give it up to my you know my Broadway experience that definitely prepared me for something like this because you everything is very uh, th- there's a strategy to it and everything has been set already. Mm-hmm. So you gotta you gotta play by the rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. Let's do our final round of the uh, the quiz, okay. and then we can wrap it up. Let me bring this music back. So we're not doing the minute quiz music yeah. right now, okay? <laughs> so th- these questions should be a little bit easier, okay? okay. This okay. person had or has a notorious dislike of air conditioning. Okay. Ooh. That's the first question. Second question is this person had a fear of flying or has a fear of flying. And refused or refused to board an airplane. That's question number two. Question number three, and all is lost if you don't get this one. (laughs) This person was or is the proud owner of all the dolphins in the United Kingdom. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, hey. I was going to say corgis. (laughs) It could be Aretha. You never know. Maybe she, you know, struck a deal. (laughs) So, maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the beginning now. Okay. Question number one. They had a notorious dislike of air conditioning. Who would that be? I'm going to say from um, all, every time I've toured overseas, the lack of air conditioning is so disheartening. I'm going to say <laughs> Queen of England. Queen of England for that one? Well, this is kind of a trick question. I'll give you this and this at the same time because... They both hated air conditioning. Aretha used to say that the air conditioning had to be turned off in in her um, room. Although Elizabeth II lives in a 775-room palace from the 17th century, so there's no central air in there. Yeah. (laughs) And she has, like, these little fans that blow both cool and warm air. And Mm -hmm. so she has those. I don't think she has 775 of them, but she... (laughs) Has them in the important rooms in the in the air, so she, you know, is also not a fan of air conditioning. 
All right, Shannon, you won that one. Okay. <laughs> Second okay. question. This person had or has a fear of flying, refuses or refused to board an airplane. That would be Aretha. Yeah, out. I'll give that to you. <laughs> um, yeah, Aretha Franklin, she spent some 30 years or so not flying airplanes. She had a bad experience on mm-hmm. one plane, and then after that, that was it. Uh, she yep. took a luxury bus <laughs> yep. pretty much everywhere she went. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Elizabeth II nowadays doesn't fly because, and for, in her case, it's because she's so old, right? Yeah. She doesn't feel mm-hmm. comfortable flying. I mean, she never felt comfortable flying, according to her. But I never feel com- Who feels comfortable <coughs> flying? Yeah, I've had some comfortable flights. <laughs> Depends on where you're yeah. going. Listen, first, yeah, first class to, to Asia, that's the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, definitely. Noted. <laughs> we'll make, make a note of that. Okay. The final question, and whoever gets this is the winner of the quiz, okay? (laughs) This person is the proud owner of all the dolphins in the United Kingdom. Who's going to chime in first? Her Majesty. (laughs) Well, you know, Her Majesty could be either one of our queens. So, (laughs) Which one are you talking about? Elizabeth. Well, now, Elizabeth could be the first (laughs) or the second. (laughs) Do I get the answer right or not? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll give it to you. So Vanessa won that. Uh, they're the proud owner of all the dolphins in the UK, also all the sturgeons and whales, as set forth in a statute during King Edward II's reign in 1324. Uh, there's another statute that was made in the 12th century that gave the queen all of the swans in the United Kingdom. Mm. Wow. Um, the idea being that they would have swans for dinner, right? Mm. Uh, they don't do that anymore. But they do have something called a swan upping, which is a census of swans. They count them all. They check on their health. And so every year the queen, you know, checks up on her swan inventory. I don't know about dolphins, though. Just just, uh, this is an educational program after all. Yes, indeed. That's what it's all about. You're sitting there wondering, why is he still talking? Right? Exactly. But uh, I have to say, we, you know, according to our... um, Policy, which we installed, I think it was when Joanne Folletta came here, um, the guest always wins. So, Shana, you won the quiz. Congratulations. Yay! Yeah. And, and let's see if I have a present for you. Okay, you get a free Mozart laugh. Ready? There you go. <laughs> from, the, from the film Amadeus, direct to you from Toledo oh. Symphony Lab. Uh, what a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No no commentary, however, on, on anything that has transpired today. <laughs> We've had a, a great conversation. Just to recap, uh, Shana Steele is coming to the Paris Style. It's Saturday, January 29th, 8 o'clock p.m. The program is entitled Queens of Soul. Shana's singing with the Toledo Symphony. Stephen Jarvie is the conductor. Stephen conducted actually my last appearance, I believe. With the uh, Toledo Symphony, the Science and Symphony program. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a great collaborator. I know that uh, he'll certainly serve you well, Shana. Right. And uh, we look forward to that concert. Look forward to having you here in Toledo. Yeah, me too. I can't wait. Thanks, guys. This program is a production of WGTE Public Media in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony, with generous support from the Rita Barbara Kern Foundation. You can download episodes of our program as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple and Google Podcasts. Don't forget to check out all the upcoming events at the Symphony by visiting their website at toledosymphony.com and their various social media outlets on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find the TSO streaming platform online. That's at stream.artstoledo.com. My thanks to Vanessa Gardner, Allie Dresser, and our special guest, Shana Steele. I'm Brad Cresswell. You've been listening to Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91. <laughs>